Greetings Tinker Teachers, this is Daniel with Tinker. Uh, in this video, uh, I'm gonna show you how to create your own Tinker Teacher projects that you could eventually assign to students. Um, um, there, I have another video where I'm gonna explain how to create tutorials, but in this, we're just gonna create some projects. We're gonna do this kind of very basic uh, using sticky notes within the project. So let's begin. All right, so I've logged into Tinker, and the first thing that I see when I log in is my classes. Uh, in the fall of 2018, we've just updated the Tinker dashboard, uh, so it's a little bit uh, more, a little simpler, a little more elegant. Uh, and there's a tab here called My Lessons. Uh, now, what we've also done in this tab is we've also included uh, the projects and a lot of the free projects that the students have access to. So you'll see um, under like the DIY library, we've got all the seasonal projects, all the beginner projects, game elements, motion projects, a lot of stuff there. Uh, Python, JavaScript, HTML projects as well. Uh, if you're a premium school, you've got an amazing library of STEM projects here that, that will connect to any class, like social studies and life science and math. So you've got all those. But what we're gonna do today is we are going to create basically a blank animation project. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do that right here. Uh, by what I did there is I just created a new project. And I'm gonna cl create a blank project. So when I do this, when I create a blank project, it gives me a blank stage and then uh, it gives me one kind of stock actor in that stage. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to walk through. I, I have kind of a, uh, I have a, one of my favorite little animation projects that I like to do. So I'm, uh, if you've seen it before, then great. I'm going to do this in more detail mm -hmm. so you can see how I do this. Um, but I'm actually going to delete uh, this actor right here. So just hit the X button and start with a totally blank stage. Uh, what I want to do is I want to create basically an underwater situation. Uh, that students can then create a little basic animation with a, a fish that kind of swims uh, back and forth in their uh, environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by adding a background. Uh, what I'm eventually going to do is I'm, I'm going to tell students to change the background to one that they like. Uh, but I do want to just get them started. So I'm going to type in something uh, that's um, you know ocean related um, right there. Uh, I think actually I actually have a category for ocean, so there we go. And I have a lot of different ocean options here uh, for them. So let's pick one of those. And then I need an actor. Uh, so I have no code yet, uh, but I want to just uh, put my actors in first and then uh, kind of show you how we're going to add instructions for how to animate those actors. So let's add an actor next. I'm gonna draw my own, and uh, we're just gonna make this very basic uh, because what we wanna do is we want students to do a better job. So I'm gonna do something that's just kind of very basic uh, so that you can tell your students, oh, do one much better than the one that's in there. Uh, and all I'm doing is I'm drawing my own using the pencil tool and the fill tool. Uh, so I'm gonna fill this with, you know, let's make this a purple fish. And uh, let's give this guy some eyes. Uh, where's, oops, sorry. He's back to my pencil. Give them a little eyes and like that. And we're just going to um, uh, put a little nice big smile on this guy's face. Like that. So hit save. So remember, you can make the actors big or small just like by grabbing the end and bringing them in like that um, so i'm gonna i'm gonna pause here for a minute and then i'm going to show you how, how to add instructions uh, on how to animate this all right okay so one of the next things i want to do is i want to give the students some instruction on how to change the stage uh, what i can do is type in in my um, section here in my uh, block library, uh, I can search for uh, a code notes option. And if I just type in comment, I get these code notes. 
So what I can do is I can, I can actually type in there uh, some instructions for students. Okay, so I finished typing this in. I put some basic instructions in these code notes, telling the student to click on the gear icon of the stage and then to go to the media library and choose an underwater environment that they like for this project. Uh, so that should be pretty good for them uh, right there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to work on my next actor and giving them some instructions. Uh, I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in some bare bones code uh, in my code editor and then my instruction is going to be about having, helping them kind of put the pieces together. So let me give you a, a pause here and then I'll show you what I do. Okay, so in the next step, what I've done is uh, I've basically created some notes, some step two and a step three for the actor here. Um, in step two, I explained that I want you, the student to click on the gear of the fish and duplicate the costume of the fish and then draw a wide open mouth in the second costume. All right, so I'm just doing this with explanation. Student would then basically, when they are assigned, they would click on the gear, click the duplicate button, uh, and I'm going to walk through this just so you can see how I do this. Uh, they'll hit the pen tool and in order to create the illusion of animation here what I can do is just create like a nice big mouth here uh, and you know if a student wants to get a little creative and <clears throat> do some like little teeth or something like that really thick teeth you said save and then what we have here is we have an actor with two costumes, one with an open mouth, one with a closed mouth. You can see where we're going with this. So step three, what I've done is I've basically placed the code here so that it's kind of ready for students to put together. Uh, with a lot of these tutorials, it's a good idea to just kind of give them the few first steps, handhold them a little bit. And then if you want them to then take it to the next level, adding more fish, adding more characters, creating more more costumes so that your animation becomes a little bit more um, in depth. That's totally up to uh, up to you to do that. But in the step three you can see what I've done is I've told students to put the code together uh, with the on start block at the top, connect the code blocks so that uh, the rotation style is set, point towards the right edge. So student would see that they would put their uh, you know their code um, together. And then the next step basically says to uh, the fish should be moving forever and then uh, as well as going to the next costume with a weight block at, uh, at 0 0.015 seconds. All right, so basically I'm putting the, you know, I'm, I'm kind of setting the student up for success here. Uh, and then I'll just show you what happens when you actually hit play. So we've got a little bit of an animation. We've got our underwater world, and we've helped students create kind of a, a nice project here. So in this next step, what I want to do is uh, undo everything, so that when I assign this, you know, everything is not put together. All right, I don't want to uh, uh, have this all put together. Uh, I want the student to do this. So I have to basically undo my entire project, and so it's all ready for the student to do the work and that means to also delete that actor right there all right so i'm going to hit delete <clears throat> all right so if i hit play now nothing should happen uh, and it's pretty much ready for the student to get started if i wanted to add one more step to just tell the student hey you know why don't you create another actor uh, add some more animations maybe add some audio um, i could go back here to my comment and just add one more code note uh, here so that um, I can give them that instruction. I'm gonna do that and then what I'm gonna do is show you how to assign it, all right? Okay, so I added one more note here and this is basically just telling students to go further, right? Uh, now that they have the basic animation they can add, can they uh, add beach waves, audio track, um, they could add an audio track there, they could add other actors, and then I'm giving them suggestion that they could add more costumes to create more illustrious animations. So just two, two costumes is gonna be very basic, but if they, you know, uh, film is done with 24 frames per second, so if you had a lot of costumes, you could create some really smooth uh, animations there. So I'm gonna add that as my step four. 
Uh, but now what I want to do is I want to assign this project. First of all, I should name it. Uh, so I'm just going to call this uh, animation um, under water and with my last name. And so I've got a name for it. Um, I'm, it's already pretty much saved, but I'll go ahead and save it anyway. Uh, and then what we, what we want to do is go find it so we can then assign it. So I'm, I'm saving it. And now what I want to do is go back to um, my projects. So remember, when it's saved in, its, in this stage, all the pieces are kind of broken up so that the student will be able to then put all the pieces together. All right. Uh, so let's go back home. And we'll save that again, sure. All right, I'm going back to my lessons. And here's my project. The one I most recently worked on is the one right at the top. So what's really cool is you can assign any project uh, that you create to a student, uh, to an individual or a class. Uh, this is a kind of important to remember because you can't assign lessons to an individual in Tinker, uh, but you can assign projects. So if you had, you know, if you wanted to differentiate to a, a student or a couple students, you could uh, assign students those projects. So I'm going to assign this uh, to, let's just go to um, one of my more recent classes, and I could type in some instructions there and assign that to that class. Great. It's been added to the assigned lessons for that class. Uh, I can check that just by going to my class here and uh, checking one of my classes and see how that looks. Go to lessons and there's my project assignment right there ready to go and that will show up when the students log in uh, on their side of things. So the last thing I want to do here is I want to show you uh, kind of a really cool thing. We often are asked, you know, it, it, how uh, if there's a seasonal project or something there that how do we how do we assign that to students? Uh, but you have that ability, and I want to make sure you understand how to do that. So um, if you go to your DIY library, and let's say there's a seasonal project in there like the Mother's Day project, uh, or the, there's an April Fool's Day. Uh, Candy Hearts Search, one of these. Uh, let's do Halloween, that's coming up. Um, you could just tell students to log into Tinker and go to their DIY projects and do the project there. Or you could assign it, that way you can see the completion of that in your gradebook. You have a little bit more accountability uh, when it comes to that project. So what I'm going to do here, I want to just show you this feature, is I'm going to do a little save project as. I'm going to call this Make a Lantern. Rezac. And um, sure, you can include the tutorial with that. That's fine. So I'm basically I'm making a copy of that project. Because this, whenever you create a project, whenever you make a project, remember it goes into your lessons uh, database, so to speak. So I just clicked back on my lessons, and now my copy of Make a Lantern is now assignable. So I could totally just click assign and I could assign that project to any student and I could put it back in that, that group there. Uh, so this is just kind of a quick and easy way for you to take a project, uh, just do a quick remix and then assign it to your class or you can also assign those to individual students as well. So uh, this is how to create a project. I hope that you'll have a lot of fun and share these. Uh, you know, tag us at Go Tinker on Twitter uh, and share these projects uh, with other teachers. That would be great. So thanks again and good luck.